Good morning, children. Today we are going to look into the mouth of a given horse. Namely, we are going to explore and learn the Analog Classics bundle that came free with your Universal Audio Apollo interface. Enjoy. The Analog Classics bundle features a bunch of great plugins from UA, including Pultec Pro EQs, LA2 and 1176 compressors, a nice channel strip called CS1, and a reverb called Realverb Pro. It's all pro. Let's look at the Pultec Pro first. Ever since it was invented in the 50s by a company called Pulse Technology, also known as Poltech, because Pulse Tech, Poltech, every studio worth their salt is supposed to have a bunch of Poltechs in their racks. And now you do too in your virtual rack. Now, what's special about a Poltech EQ? Let me show you. The main reason why the Poltech Pro has been so popular for so many years is because of the sound. The transformer tube, transformer designs are actually so smooth that it's hard to screw up when you EQ something with the Pultec Pro. The ease of use is the other feature. The plugin that UA gives you in the Analog Classics bundle is actually a combination of two pieces of hardware emulations. There is the MEQ5 and the EQP1A. The MEQ5 was a standalone piece of hardware designed just to EQ mid-range. And then the EQP1A was for the highs and the lows. UA smartly put it together into one plugin so you can EQ the whole range with just one piece of gear. For those of you who haven't used a real Pultec or haven't used a Pultec plugin before, it can be a little confusing as to what does what, where, when, why. Let me show you. The top half of the plugin is the mid range MEQ5. Here, the two controls on the left are actually the low boost. Most EQs you may have used so far would let you cut and boost with the same controls. Here, no, it's different. Here, you have a peak control and a dip control, which you can use at the same time, which means you could theoretically boost and cut the same frequency at the same time. It's fun to do, you should try it. So here on the left we have the peak. You can choose your frequency here, very broad range. Here's your dip, 200, 300, 500, 700, etc. And here on the right is your peak. So these two work together, these two work together, and these two work together. So low mid peak, a dip control that you can range between 207K, and a peak control for the upper mids 1.5k to 5k. That's the MEQ5. Let's look at the bottom half of the plugin, the EQP1A. First, bypass button right here. This is different from here because this only bypasses the mid range and this bypasses the low and highs. And here, this bypasses everything. Important to know. The EQP1A controls are slightly different from the MEQ5 controls, otherwise, it would not be fun. These three controls here are for the low end. You pick your frequency and you boost it or you cut it. As opposed to the EMEQ5 we just saw where you can pick a frequency for peaking and then you can pick one different one for dipping. Here you just pick one frequency and you boost or cut from the same frequency. It has interesting results, I'll show you. So that's the low end right here. For the high end it works this way. These three controls work together. You pick a frequency, you choose how much you want to boost it, and you choose how wide the bandwidth of the boost is. This is a Q system, just like on a parametric EQ. You see the size of the bell on the parametric EQ? This is kind of the same thing. They call it bandwidth because they want to confuse you. This is from the 50s, don't forget. And these last two buttons are the high-end cuts. You choose your frequency, and you can attenuate it. So this is not related to this knob here, is related to this knob. To summarize, these three work together to boost or cut your low end. These three work together to boost your high end, and these two work together to cut your high end. Isn't that wonderful? While Pultex have been considered to be great on everything, most people particularly like him on vocals, bass, and full program material, meaning mixes. So for example, here's a wonderful uh, bridge by Will Knox. Sounds a little bit like this. Safe for now while the lights are down Tracing steps to a timeless sound Between paint chip walls of old music hall So it sounds good, but maybe it's a little dull and a little boomy. Uh, what can we do? Well, very simply, the way you think about it is, okay, it's a little dull, maybe I'm going to add a little bit of high end. So maybe in the 10K range, medium bandwidth to start, and then 
pick a number out of somewhere. Here we go. Safe for now while the lights are down. Without. Safe for now while the lights are down. So easy. Uh, how about an old 5K shine? Like this. Safe for now while the lights are down. Tracing steps. Without. Safe for now while the lights are down. With. Safe for now while the lights are down. Okay, now there's a little bit of a mask in the nose down there. Maybe we can cut a little bit of 300 with the MEQ5 and then compensate by adding a little bit of the very bottom. It would sound like this. Safe for now while the lights are down. Tracing steps to a timeless sound. Without. Safe for now while the lights are down. Tracing steps. With. Safe for now while the lights are down. Easier would be painful. Also remember, if you got the Analog Classics bundle with an Apollo interface, you can actually use this plugin in real time on the way in while recording your vocal, which means you can tweak your vocal to sound just the way you want it using this very simple EQ, and it's going to get recorded, and you don't have to mess with it later. Pultex are also great to make something that's not so fat more fat or fatter if you have proper English. For example, this bass. Recorded direct, not super exciting. Can choose a 100 hertz band on the EQP1A, the bottom part, and just raise it. Without, with, doesn't require a PhD in science. However, here's where it gets fun. I just boosted 100 quite a bit. What happens if I play with the attenuation? If you listen to the result of the boost of the 100, you get the fat that you want, but you also get a little bit of a mm thing. Check it out. little bit of cotton right now check out what happens if I play with the attenuation at the same frequency since if you remember these three controls are tied together as a reminder we started flat like this we are here now Just to boost, it sounded like this. And with the boost and attenuation at the same spot. Quick, easy way to take a direct bass and make it sound fat. And you could do the same with all instruments. Bass drums also benefit greatly from this trick. Uh, even some um, male vocal, you could boost the very bottom and then use the attenuation to do a little bit of a cut. The best way to function when using a pull tech EQ is like this. Pick a frequency, boost it. Like it or not. If you don't like it, pick another one. Move on. There's nothing complicated about it, and that's the beauty of it all. Also, there's no graph. There is no visual rendition of what it does, which means you're forced to listen to it. That's even better. Another great way to use the pull tech is on a full mix to make it sound a little more sprussed up. Even when you use it in stereo, you only get one set of controls for both sides. So whatever you do is applied to both sides exactly the same. For example, on this track, I still hear violins, still taste the tonic and the gin. I still see colors where the Kodachrome has been. I hear a little bit of mud, right? And I hear a little bit of lack of joy in the high end. So let's put some joy in the high end. I'm going to pick 16K, full bandwidth because I want a pretty broad, gentle, and I'm going to boost it gently. I still see colors where the Kodachrome has been. Maybe 16 is too high. How about we go down to 10, for example? I still see colors where the Kodachrome has been. Without? I still see colors. Where the Kodachrome has been. With? I still see colors. Where the Kodachrome has been. It's starting to sound a little more open. 
I'm lacking a little bit of that shine in the top of the vocal, so maybe a little 5K would be nice. Check it out. I still see colors where the Kodachrome has thinned. That's nice without. I still see colors where the Kodachrome has thinned. With. I still see colors where the Kodachrome has thinned. I'm digging this. And maybe a little bit of super bottom. Check it out. I still see colors where the Kodachrome has thinned. Where does that time go? Where did that fire go from your eyes? I replay memories. So I picked 20, boosted it to really get the vibe for it. Didn't work. Pick 30, duck that. That was too much. Put it back down and use the attenuation knob to try and do that little cut and boost at the same time trick. So I get the boost in the super lows, but I get a little bit of relief in the low mids area. So we started with the track sounding like this. I still see colors where the Kodachrome has thinned. Where does that time go? And now we're here. I still see colors where the Kodachrome has thinned. Where does that time go? Very simple. Three or four moves and you go from dull to nice and palatable that you can send to your mother or girlfriend or dog, depending on who you hang out with. Next in line in the Classics bundle is the LA-2A, which is a compressor that's been around for longer than I have, you have, and we all have put together collectively. What's so special about that? Well, like a Pultec, it's easy to use and it sounds great. Again, transformer to transformer design with a little bit of a twist. In an LA-2A, the gain reduction is actually achieved by a light. The brighter the light gets, the more gain reduction you get. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. Look it up. It's called a T4 cell. What is great about the whole light thing is that it gives the LA-2A a certain sound, certain attack and release characteristics that are perfect for bass and for vocals. Isn't that wonderful? The original designer, Jim Lawrence, was only looking to make something that would allow him to not have to write a fader all day long while working at a radio. I don't think he was planning to make the end all vocal compressor for the next 50 years, but here we are anyway. Here's how to use an LA-2A. First, listen to your track raw. In this case, we have the pull tech from before. Check it out. Till a daylight, a dance with your ghost. Select the LA-2. It comes up, default setting, press play. Till a daylight, a dance with your ghost. Without. Till a daylight, a dance with your ghost. With. Till a daylight, a dance with your ghost. As far as I'm concerned, this is actually a little too much compression. So let's look at the controls. We have two controls. One on the left called gain, one on the right called peak reduction. It may be a little bit confusing if you're from the Western world and you read from left to right since in most fashions, first you reduce the peaks, then you compensate by adding gain, which is the principle of compression. So the original designer decided to put the gain on the left and the peak reduction on the right. We love him nonetheless. Here's how you think about it. You want less compression? Take this knob down. Till a daylight, a dance with your ghost. More compression, you guessed it. Till a daylight, a dance with your ghost. So, of course, the principle, if you're going to overcompress like this, is to compensate by raising the gain. Sounds like this. Till a daylight, a dance with your ghost. Without. Till a daylight, a dance with your ghost. With. Till a daylight, a dance with your ghost. As you can see, it's hard to screw up. Even with this insane amount of compression, it still sounds palatable. Now. Friends don't let friends compress that much. There's no reason for it, unless you're looking for a special effect. I would say for a vocal, for example, three to 10 dBs of compression, depending on how uneven the original take is, is acceptable. Anything beyond that is a matter of taste. You have yours, I have mine. This button right here on the left will provide you with endless amounts of ABing, meaning listening to one and the other and wondering why you can't hear a difference. And that's okay. Until you have the supersonic ears that let you hear the difference between 3 to 1, 20 to 1 in conditions where there's really not that much of a difference, uh, leave it in compress. Before we move on, let me return the settings to something a little more reasonable. Default gain. Till a daylight. Too much compression, obviously. Till a daylight. A dance with your ghost. 
still too much. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. I kind of dig that. So check it out without. Till the daylight, and then I dance with your ghost gets a lot louder. This is without. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Right, you hear the difference in level between the two. And now with the compression. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. It's a little too quiet, so I'm going to add some gain so you can compare with and without at the same gain. Without. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. With. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Of course, again, just like the Pultec, you can put this on the way in while you record and record this effect. So you have a pre-compressed, pre-EQ'd vocal straight into your session so you can move on and worry about something else later. The next plugin in the Analog Classics bundle is the 1176, which is also a compressor. What's so special about the 1176 that's worth knowing? Number one, it's from the late 60s. Peace, man. Number two, it's solid state, not two. Number three, it's very, very fast, meaning it moves fast and it can catch transients and attacks very well, which is why people love it. Let me show you. The 1176 functions very differently and has a lot more controls than an LA-2A. In the case of the 1176, you get more compression by raising the input level into the processor. The more level you give, the more compression you get because it's a fixed threshold. So your threshold's here and then you raise your level into the threshold. You also have ratio controls, 4, 8, 12 and 20. The thing that is tricky here is that even though the 1176 is built as a fixed threshold compressor, it's not. The threshold changes when you change the ratio because otherwise it would be too simple. Basic understanding of threshold, ratios and other concepts like that are better explained elsewhere. What I'm trying to do here is show you how to make the most of these particular plugins for special situations. Of course, if you raise your level into the box, even though you're going to get some compression, you will have to adjust the output level so that you don't blow the next processor out of the water. So here's how I usually use it. I listen to my track flat. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Then I turn it on with the default settings. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. So that's obviously too much compression. How do you think about it? Very simple. Since you get more compression, if you raise the input into the box, obviously you're going to get less compression if you lower the input into the box. So let's do that. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Without. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. So obviously now the uncompressed signal is louder than the compressed signal. Let's compensate for that. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Without. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Okay, I'll play it again. Listen to the raw vocal and the difference in level with and without. First, without. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. With. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. With, it's nicely pinned in place and doesn't move much, which is what we're looking for from a compressor on the vocal, for example. The other thing that's cool is it adds a little bit of a color, a little bit of a tone, a difference in tone. The reason for that is that this plugin is emulating a piece of hardware, and that piece of hardware had transformers in it on the input and the output. And transformers are very much responsible for the color of a lot of boxes. The other controls you need to be aware about are the attack and release and ratio controls. Attack and release kind of speak for themselves, except there's a little bit of a twist. Very fast attacks will let you catch all transients, kill the top of a snare, or really keep something in place. Of course, it will sound like you're compressing. If you want to have less of an obvious compression, you're going to slow the attack down to let some of the original sound through and give it more presence. The twist within 1176 is that 7 is the fastest and 1 is the slowest. That makes no sense, but it makes sense. Same for release. Now, how does one think about setting attack and release on an 1176 if you're not quite sure? It's pretty simple. Don't touch it. That said, if you have a vocal that's a little spitty or a little too present, or a snare that has too much attack, you can speed the attack up by going towards the 7, and it will catch more of that initial attack. If you want more presence and let more of the sound through, then you go towards the 1 on the attack. Same spirit for the release. If you want the compressor to let go faster so the sound is more natural, go towards the 7. If you want the compressor to rain in all the time and try and do some level control, then go towards the 1. In this case, I like the attack and release on the vocal. The default is pretty nice. Let's talk about ratio. 
you have 4 and 8, which are considered compression, and then 12 and 20, which are considered limiting. As a rule of thumb, if you want something more gentle, use compression. If you want something more drastic, use limiting. For a very detailed overview of all those settings, I recommend you watch the dedicated 1176 video. As always, you can use this on the way in. Now you gotta be careful. It is very easy to overdo it with an 1176. So if you're gonna record with it, keep an eye on the gauge. Make sure you're always in gain reduction mode here and keep an eye on that needle. If your needle hangs out most of the time minus 20, you're screwing up. Also part of the bundle is the 1176 SE, which is the same controls, the same principles, the same emulation. It's just coded differently, so it's more efficient with DSP, so you can use more of them with your Apollo. I personally wouldn't say that one sounds better than the other, but they do sound a little different, so you must listen carefully. Next in the fantastic list is the little-known CS1 channel strip. When you first open the CS1, it can look a little overwhelming, especially considering all the controls there are and what the preset sounds like. Till a daylight. But fear not, we can do better. First, I recommend you turn off the delay modulator, here, and the reflector, here. And now it sounds like this. Till a daylight. Ah. So, what is this plugin? Think of it as your channel of a console. That's really what it is. You get an EQ here on top, then you get a compressor here. And then you get some cool special effects after that. Let's go over the EQ first. This is a five band, fully parametric EQ that's very transparent, very clean. Every band has full control, gain, frequency. Do note that all the bands overlap, which means that if you want all five bands to hang out in the 60 to 80 hertz range, you can do it. I wouldn't do it, but you could. Things to note. Every band has an on-off button, so make sure these are on, otherwise you're not hearing anything that you're doing. Also, the bottom band here can be a high-pass filter, which is very practical when you're tracking vocals. You can remove the bottom rumble and stuff like that. This is really great. When you're in high-pass mode, obviously the gain does nothing because you're just filtering. It's no longer an EQ, it's a filter. The top band can be a low-pass filter, which also can be very useful for very bright things. And some of these bands can be turned into shelving. So, for example, the bottom band is now a shelf EQ. What I would recommend you do is probably use the bottom band as the high pass filter and the second most band here as your shelf EQ, as they allow you to do very smartly. So you have five bands, which you can configure for a very practical tracking or mixing setup of a high pass, low shelf, mid parametric, high shelf, and low pass. Each band having its own bypass button and a general bypass for the entire EQ with an offset right here. The offset is great. A lot of EQs don't have offset. Say you boost a lot inside the bands, you're going to end up with a lot more level. How do you compare the same level? Well, you could use this output offset and this bypass button to compare at equal level. Same, if you cut a lot, you can boost the output. That's great. Also, this output button makes sure that you don't have to kill the input of the compressor if you do a lot of EQing. Next is the compressor. It's not trying to be an LA2 or an 1176 or any existing hardware compressor. It's its own thing. It compresses. If the signal is too loud, it breaks it down. This is how it works. The first thing to do is to set your ratio. I recommend you try 3 to 1, because 3 to 1 never killed anyone. Ratio is how much compression is going to happen when you are compressing. Then set your threshold based on your signal level. The threshold knob decides at which level the compressor is going to start compressing. So the ratio decides how much compression is going to happen when it compresses, and the threshold decides at which level it starts compressing, which is different from the LA2 and the 1176, right? LA2, you just decide how much compression you want it. 1176, you raise the level into the compressor to get it to compress. Here, you lower the threshold until you hit the point where you want compression. You'll get the hang of it. Now, this compressor is a little different because it has auto gain built in, and you can't turn it off. What is auto gain? Auto gain is your compressor automatically compensating for the amount of gain you're losing because of compression. Think about it for a second. Yes. So, it's different from traditional compressors. Think of it as one less knob to worry about. So before we go any further, let's start processing Will's vocal with just the channel strip. I'm going to reset it to default. Click. Don't forget to turn off the modulator and the reflector. 
I'm going to turn the bottom band into a high pass. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. And then I'm going to remove a little bit of the mask at 200 and change, I think. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. That's too much. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Without. Till a daylight. With. Till a daylight. A little bit of shine on top. I'm going to turn this into a shelf right here and make it shine around 12K-ish. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. I'm going to low pass at 20k to make sure there's nothing garbagey up there. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Without. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. With. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. That's acceptable to me. Then I'm going to turn the compressor on, switch to 3 to 1, and lower my threshold until I hit just what I want. You'll see it with the needle moving. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. So I think it needs to start compressing at lower levels, a little bit, just a few dBs. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Let's go crazy. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. You will notice that even though I'm now at minus 17 dBs on the threshold control, the level is not lowering like it was with the LA2. That's because of the auto gain feature. Let's go further. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. So I'm starting to hear unnatural sounds on the breaths. Check it out. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Without. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. So I'm going to probably be less brutish. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. That's acceptable to me. Just like on the 1176, you have attack and release controls. Same principle, except here, faster is to the left, slower is to the right. Leave them as default until you really get a feel for it. But again, more presence, slow the attack down. More clamping down the transients and the fast attacks, speed the attack up. Why, might you ask, is there an output knob if there's an auto game feature? Very good question. Thank you for asking. It's because A, the auto game feature is not necessarily perfect. Two, that lets you control the gain stage of the entire compressor and the entire chain so far into the next module, which is the delay. Next is the delay modulator, which should be called delay and modulator, or actually more accurately, delay or modulator. Let me show you. Let's turn it on. Sounds like this. Till a daylight. But it could also be useful if you tweak it a little bit. Check it out. It has several personalities, just like your ex-girlfriend. Chorus, chorus 180, quack chorus, flanger, flanger, dual delay, and ping pong. So right now we're hearing the chorus, but we're also hearing some delays at the top of the chorus, and it's all kind of complicated. This is how you think about it. First things first, if you're going to be in chorus mode, make sure you lower the delays here so that you can hear what's going on. Till a daylight. Ah, chorus. Then, if you're in chorus mode, you have the rate. Till a daylight. A and the depth. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Super pleasant. If you want to get really tweaky, you can actually change the shape of the waveform that is the modulator. But we're not that kind of girl. Here's the thought process. A, pick your effect. You want a chorus, you want a delay, you want a flanger. Second, make sure that if you're not using delays, that the delay settings are short enough that you actually hear the process that it's supposed to be, like I showed you earlier. Third, choose your wet to dry mix. So, what does that mean? How much of the effective signal do you want? Till a daylight. Versus the dry signal. Till a daylight. Now, what's this negative wet-dry signal about? It's the same. It's the ratio of wet versus dry, but the wet signal has its polarity inverted, and I am sure you can find some use for that one day. Next, you notice here that you have left delay, right delay, left pan, right pan, that's because this plugin also works in stereo. In this case, it's a vocal, so it's just mono. But if you were in stereo, you could choose the width of these effects. Also, here you have something called Récir. It's not French. No, no, no. It's called Recirculation, which most other people call feedback. So the Recirculation control is the feedback control you know. And then Damping. That's pretty cool. Let me show you on a delay. The delay mode is called Dual Delays. So you guessed it, we have two delays. The time for the first delay is here, the time for the second delay is here. As I just mentioned, if you work in stereo, you could choose the left and right pans for those delays. Now, check it out. 
For a vocal, I like shorter delays to try and create a little bit of a bounce. Till a daylight. Maybe shorter. Till a daylight. Okay. And then less of a mix. Till a daylight. I dance with your ghost. That's interesting. The damping is really a way to darken every other occurrence of the delay. Meaning, as the delays repeat, they get darker and darker and darker and darker, like the old tape delays did. Check it out. This is wide open. Till a daylight. And this is very dark. Till a daylight. You almost don't hear it. If you go in between, till a daylight. You get that space, but you don't get the brightness and the annoying repetitions. Without, till a daylight. With, till a daylight. Maybe a little more open and a little shorter. Till a daylight. And this is all built in within the plugin, so you could make yourself a preset that you track through in real time and have all this already ready to go. As a reminder, we started with the vocal here. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Now we're here. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. And of course, this is a little quieter than the raw signal, so I can use the offset gain here to compensate. Till a daylight, till a daylight, till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. I strongly urge you to explore this menu because it is rare to be able to have modulation and delays built in on a channel strip and it's very practical if you're mixing fast. Last but not least, the reflector. Let's turn it on. I'm going to turn the modulator delay off so you can really focus on the sound of the reflector. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. The reflector is a great early reflection module. It lets you mimic the characteristics of a small room, not the ch tail famous in the 80s and Enya records, but the sound of the room, like are you in a kitchen, are you in a garage, are you in a bedroom? And it's very useful to create space around instruments, especially these days when most people record everything way too close to the microphone and there's no space behind it. So having the reflector on every channel can be great to give depth to your mix. Here's how to think about it. The default is actually pretty cool just to put space into something. The first thing you should do is decide of a wet dry mix, just like you did with the delay. And with this plugin, you can also go into a polarity inverted mode, which you will also find a proper use for one day. Here, let's go around eight. Let's play it without as a reminder. Till a daylight. With. Till a daylight. You can hear this cool space around the vocal. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit so you can really hear it while I design the process and then bring it back to something more usable. So let's put it at say 14%. Without. Till a daylight. A with. Till a daylight. You can really feel this happening, right? So you have the wet dry mix. If you're working in stereo, you have your pans right here. We're in mono, so everything is defaulting 100% to the left as default. And then you have the size. Till a daylight. Let me exaggerate a little further. Till a daylight. Smaller size. Till a daylight. You can really hear the room getting smaller. Very, very small. Till a daylight. Or huge. Till a daylight. Then you can choose the shape of the room. Every room has a different shape. So, of course, if you click on the menu, it's possible that you have a small heart attack. Do not have a heart attack. Just pick one, listen to it. If you don't like it, move on. There are no dire consequences of not knowing in advance what a shape is going to sound like. I don't. Nobody does, except maybe the guy who designed the plugin. So we're on the corridor. Let's listen to the cube. Till a daylight. Corridor. Till a daylight. Corridor is a little lighter. Okay. How about dome? Till a daylight. I dance with your ghost. I don't know. I think I like the cube better. Till a daylight. How about a smaller cube? Till a daylight. That's usable. Next control. Recirculation, feedback, right? So more of it. Till a daylight. And damping. Till a daylight. So you can make the room darker and have more reflections. All these nuances become clearer and more intuitive over time. Using presets is totally fine and nobody will sue you over it. Let me tweak it a little further so it sounds better. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. 
Very often you know you're there when you're no longer sure if you have a process on or not. That means it's integrated in the track and not calling attention to itself. Like for example now, this is with processing. Till a daylight. And this is without. Till a daylight. Everything feels very forward without and very dry and very demo-y. And with, you have a little more of a space. Till a daylight. I dance with your ghost. And then if we add the delay modulator back on. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. And that's nice. All in one, EQ compression, a little bit of delay, and a little bit of early reflection to give it a vibe. All in one plugin, this track will now fit nicely into the bed around it. Last but not least, the Reverb Pro. Let me show you the controls. This reverb attempts to recreate real spaces with a twist. You have a shape control and a material control. Shape is the shape of the room. Material is what covers the walls of the room. To give you more control, they let you mix and match shapes and mix and match materials, which makes sense because no room is perfectly square and no room is made entirely of gold. So, to keep things simple, I recommend you start by using one shape and one material. For example, let's pick this shape and this material. A reverse fan and hardwood. These two controls here relate to the different shapes. The top size control relates to the size of that reverse fan, and the bottom size control relates to this one, but we're not using it right now. Same for material, this is the thickness of the hardwood, and this would be the thickness of the marble, but we're not using the marble this very minute. This is what a reverse fan room of size 56 meters with any 1% of hardwood thickness sounds like. Till a daylight. Okay, this is what it would sound like if it were marble. Till a daylight. So apparently marble is thicker sounding than hardwood. Over time, you can learn that stuff. As I said before, if you are designing your own reverb from scratch, it's easier to use one shape and one material and then go from there. But you can also use presets. Doesn't hurt. So let's use a preset here. There's one I like called Theater. Check it out. Till a daylight. That's nice, and I can play with this and show you how to tweak it. So this is a fan and an A-frame, and some plaster and some drapes. The plaster sounds like this. Till a daylight. And the drapes sound like this. Till a daylight. A lot darker as you would expect, so a mix of the two is interesting. Till a daylight. Fair enough. Next, in the positioning section, here's what you need to know about. The mix is the mix of wet-dry, just as we saw before. So less would be nice in this case. Till a daylight. As a remember, we started here. Till a daylight. With. Till a daylight. That's nice. Distance is a very proprietary system that lets you actually alter the feeling of distance between the subject and the reverb. You can play with it. It's not a crucial setting for now, but you can play with it if you want to get really, really tricky. And you have pan controls or width controls for the early reflections and for the late reflections. Let me show you the difference between early and late reflections so you can wrap your head around that. Early reflections, as I've explained before, are the sound of a room. Because when you're in a room and you speak, your voice hits the wall and gets back to you. The ceiling, the floor, the sidewalls, everywhere. The sound of those reflections get to your ear and your brain imagines what kind of room you're in. That is why you can tell where you are in your house, even with your eyes closed. Your brain reconstructs what room you're in based on the early reflections. So in this case, I'm going to lower the level of the late reflection and we're going to listen to only the early reflections, which is this engine right here. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. You can choose how late they are. Till a daylight. As a reminder, this is flat. Till a daylight. With. Till a daylight. I'm going to put a little more reverb so it's easier to listen to. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Now you can hear there's a little bit of a space, just like we heard on the channel strip. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. You can choose how dense they are, how delayed they are, and how loud they are. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. And then you have the tail, also known as late reflections. I'm going to turn the early reflections off. And this is the late reflections. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. So as you notice, this is your level. This is your distance. Fairly straightforward. 
Same here, this is your level for the late reflections. This is the delay, this is how long it takes before they hit, and this is how long they are. So if you want a really long reverb, you do this. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. Trippy. So, the combination of early and late reflections lets you really shape the reverb you want. I don't think we're going to keep the 18 seconds reverb. Let's start with 2 seconds ish. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. We're going to put less of the combination of early and late so it's more realistic. Till a daylight, I dance with your ghost. It sounds supernatural. If you remember, I mentioned earlier you have early and late reflections stereo width, which means you could have more centered early reflections and very wide late reflections. All that stuff is very subtle and all the parameters kind of interact with each other, so it can be overwhelming. What I recommend you do is start from a preset you like and just tweak things a little bit until you get a feel for it. There are a couple more things you need to know about Realverb Pro. For example, what is that resonance control? Well, that is more of an EQ than anything else. Check it out. You can change the range of the EQ like this. You can dampen the high end, which is very useful for reverbs to make them more discreet. You can dampen the low end, which is very practical to clear the mud from a mix like this. And you can also add or remove some mids and really shape the tone of the reverb. So don't let the word resonance confuse you. It's really an EQ. Check it out. Right now, it's really dark. Safer now while the lights are down. Or brighter. Safer now while the lights are down. Of course, I can hear you think from here, but wait, wait, wait. I can also change the color with the material here, and then I can change the amount here, and I can change the early reflection and the late reflections. Yes, I know. That's what presets are for. Two more things. One, morphing. What's that? This reverb lets you morph, basically seamlessly transition between two presets. So for example, maybe a small room and a really big room. And you go from the small room to the very big room by sliding the slider here. And there's no artifacts. It's pretty cool. Let me show you. So let's pick a couple presets we like. Like, for example, I don't know, large bathroom and jazz club. That's a nice transition right there. So we start with large bathroom and we transition to a jazz club somehow. Here we go. Safer now while the lights are down. Tracing steps to a timeless sound between paint chip walls of old music halls. That is one large bathroom. Two, last but not least, as you've seen, I've been using the Realverb Pro straight on the vocal track and using the mix ratio right here to decide how much of it I want to hear versus the dry signal. Another option is to not use it on the track itself, but put it on an aux on a different track and sand to it. Here's my sand, and here's my reverb. What you need to know in this case is that you have to have the reverb be 100% wet, so you only hear the reverb on the aux. You can also use this cute little W button here that makes it 100% wet automatically. This is how it works. Safer now while the lights are down, tracing steps to a timeless sound. But the main benefit of putting the reverb on an aux as opposed to directly on the track is that, well, A, you save DSP and also you can send multiple instruments to it since it's a sand system. So you can send the reverb and the guitar and the vocal to the same reverb, which gives a certain ensemble vibe to the sound. Using it on a single track keeps it simple. You know that's the reverb for the vocal and you don't have to worry about anything else. Your mileage will vary. So there you have it. Pultec Pro, LA2A 1176, CS1 Channel Strip, and the Realverb Pro. Everything you need to mix a record or track a record with your Apollo box. We just skimmed the surface. If you want to see more in-depth mixing videos or tracking videos, look elsewhere on the site. Thank you, et voilà.